G'day there guys, Marky here, and welcome back to another episode of r slash am I the asshole. Let's get into it. Am I the asshole for advising my friend against coming out? Okay, so I, 23 female, have a friend Sam, who's the same age as me, who is a female to male transgender individual. However, I am one of the very few people who know this, and he generally still presents as female. This is because his family, mum, dad, grandfather, are all, quite frankly, horrible homophobics. Seriously, I've been to their house three times since Sam and I met in middle school, and each time one of them has launched into some sort of hateful rant, completely unprompted. Now, here is where it gets complicated. Horrible as he might be, Sam's grandfather is very wealthy, and Sam is set to inherit two and a half million dollars when he dies, which will probably be soon due to the man's rather serious health conditions. Sam has seen the will and knows this for a fact, but he also knows that he'll be disowned if he came out as transgender to his family. Because of this, Sam has stayed in the closet and continues to present a female. Though he took to cutting his hair shorter and dressing more androgynously in college, for the sake of staying in good standing with his grandfather. Sam has always been very open about his plan to fully come out and deal with the consequences after he had the money. But today, at 5.30 in the morning, Sam called me and woke me up to tell me that he was considering coming out to his family soon, and that he thought that it was dishonest to continue with a lie for money, but asked for my advice. I was shocked, but honestly told him that I thought that it was a bad idea. I explained that the two and a half million dollars would allow Sam to finally live his dream life, pay off student debts, get a sex change surgery, maybe get a house, etc. Then I pointed out that Sam would almost certainly be thrown out of the house for doing so. He still lives with his parents for some complicated reasons, and he wouldn't be able to stay with me if that happened because, on top of living in a one-bedroom apartment, I babysit my six-year-old immunocompromised younger brother twice a week, and I cannot risk cross-contamination from Sam, who is an essential worker. I also wasn't shy about making my opinion that his family wasn't worthy of honesty extremely clear. Anyway, after I was done explaining all of this, Sam just burst into tears before hanging up. I was confused, but it was also only 5.45, so I just rolled over and went back to bed. Later in the morning, I woke up to a bunch of text messages from Sam, saying that I was a bad friend, a horrible person, and claiming that I'm homophobic and transphobic. Now, I could not give a damn about a person's sexual orientation or gender identity if you paid me. I am simply a deeply pragmatic person, and Sam knows this, so it really hurt to read these text messages. I didn't respond at first, and decided to talk this over with my mother, who was aware of Sam's situation. Anyway, am I the asshole? In the comments, not the asshole. Your advice, while unpleasant, was sound. It's not even about the inheritance, it's that he's living with horrible, transphobic parents who would disown him if he came out. It's hard to know whether he would be safe if he did come out, or whether he would be homeless or whatnot. He needs to get to a place where he can safely support himself before he comes out. I would sit down with a friend and calmly explain what you said here, and maybe recommend that he finds a therapist that he can bounce things off of, and that you'll help him in any way that you feasibly can. I, as a cis, straight male, have no idea how hard your friend actually has it, but I can sympathize. No assholes here. This situation is incredibly nuanced and I can understand why Sam reacted the way he did, yet his life will only get harder if he opens up to his nightmarish parents. Given a little bit of time, he will reap the benefits of his patience, and his parents will be a non-issue. No assholes here. Some people aren't worth fighting. Besides, Sam asked for your advice. If he wasn't ready to hear about it, he shouldn't have asked. He probably is in a very stressful situation that he wants to get out of, and you probably gave him a piece of reality that he wasn't ready to face at all. Try to talk to him. After all, you meant no harm. And OP says, I did tell him that, at the very least, he should get a new place to live before doing so. He also got upset when I said that he couldn't live with me. I think that was his assumption, and normally I'd be happy to let him crash on my couch, but given everything going on in the world, it just isn't doable. 
And now onto the update. Okay, so I want to thank everyone on my original post for their different perspectives and that everyone was able to be calm and respectful. I'll be the first to admit that, while I have my own issues, I obviously cannot fully relate to Sam's struggles and I probably could have been nicer about my concerns. In my own defense, he did wake me up at 5.30, so I was pretty dazed and grouchy. I also wanted to elaborate on the money situation and why Sam and I probably view that two and a half million dollars very differently. Sam and I come from very different financial backgrounds. I came from a poor, blended household of six children and was the second eldest child. We never starved. My extended family, we were all very close, but luxuries were very hard to come by and there were times that my twin brother and I were both working multiple part-time jobs to keep the lights on or to replace the water heater when it broke for the second time. I was only able to attend the same private schools as Sam because of merit-based scholarships. I, and my family as a whole, am in a much better position now money-wise as I work two well-paying jobs, one of which is footing the bill for me to get my doctorate degree but I still have a lot of money-related anxiety. Sam, however, has always been rich, and while his family are all pricks, they never hesitated to spoil him financially. I used to call him a Visa Kid, which is like a latchkey kid, but with his father's Visa card, which he was free to use whenever he wanted. Sam never bragged about having vastly more money than I did, but there were definitely times that he was accidentally insensitive about it, he once commented about how run down my house was after seeing where my stepdad had patched up some leaky pipes with neon orange duct tape, for example. Despite this, Sam usually had dinner at my house. My mum's a great cook, about twice a week, oblivious that my parents budgeted for each meal very carefully and him being there was honestly an inconvenience. They both felt bad for him though, and they never said anything. Currently, Sam has a well-paying job as a hospital lab tech, but has no real savings, and is, in general, terrible with money. He has no idea how to budget because his family has always paid for everything, and the only reason he has student loans is because they refuse to pay for some study abroad that Sam wanted to do. When I said that he still lives at home, what I actually meant is that he lives in his parents' guest house completely rent-free. They even buy his groceries for him, so the money that he makes from his job is basically spent on video games, clothes, collectibles, etc. My point is that Sam could definitely afford to live on his own slash be financially independent if he wanted to, but I'm genuinely concerned how he would take the downgrading that it would require. Anyway, on to the update. I went home today for our standard Sunday meal, and I talked things over with my mum. She says that it sounds like Sam had already decided to come out and was looking for support and validation instead of advice, but didn't want to outright ask for it. Mum also says that while she agrees with me, she thinks that I could have been gentler and that I should apologize for the sake of the friendship. I, however, was conflicted. I don't believe in false apologies because they are demeaning to everyone involved. I also don't like that Sam went fishing for validation and support instead of just asking for it, because I think that's manipulative. As I said before, I am a very pragmatic individual and think that it would be foolish to give up so much money when you are so close to getting it. Still, I also know how hard it has been for Sam to keep such a big part of himself a secret for so long, so I thought about all the comments left on my original post and what mum said, and I eventually decided to send Sam an email saying one, I stand by what I said earlier, and I think the advice I gave was solid, even if it wasn't what he wanted to hear. Two, but I was sorry if what I said hurt him, and that hadn't been my intention at all. Three, that I would of course stand by and support Sam if he made the choice to come out, as it was his choice. Four, but I also thought that he should make sure that he was both physically, emotionally, and financially stable before doing so. Five, I sent him the information for the mental health clinic that I go to, which is offering three free Skype sessions with a counsellor to help people cope with quarantine, and suggested Sam talk things over with one. 6. I also suggested that he get his important personal documents together, a social security card, birth certificate, passport, etc., and put them in a secret safe place. I even offered to hold on to them. And 7. Finally, 
I say that he should make sure that he has somewhere to live before coming out. I found a couple of cheap, like $500 a month, places on Craigslist for rent, and put the links in. I even promised to pay for the first month's rent if necessary. Then I sent the email on out and went to help cook dinner. About an hour later, Sam called, but my hands were covered in flour and eggs. So I asked my sister, 16 female, to answer my phone and put it on speaker, believing falsely that we were about to have a calm adult situation. Sam blew up. For about 30 minutes, Sam just yelled about how one, there were more accusations of being homophobic and transphobic, two, accused me of calling him crazy, three, called me a robot. This one hurt the most, silly as it sounds, because I'm on the autism spectrum and have a hard time with understanding expressions and emotions in general, which I'm very sensitive about. And four, said he would never move into any of the apartments I suggested because they were trashy and wondered why he couldn't just stay with me. I tried to explain about my little brother again only to be told, and I quote, why are you so worried about that brat? He isn't your kid, just forget about him right now. Then Sam hung up again, and it was my sister's turn to blow. My sister is bisexual and has never really liked Sam, though I never knew why until now. Sis was angry that Sam would say those things when I and our family have done nothing but support him. She said that, throughout our years of friendship, it has always been me supporting Sam and never the other way around despite having my own issues. I tried to argue, but Sis reminded me that after I had extensive eye surgery in high school to hopefully prevent me from going blind before 30, Sam couldn't even be bothered to drop off my schoolwork or drive me to a checkup when no one else was available. She compared that to when I had to leave an important work dinner to pick up a drunk Sam from a gay bar, or when Sam got angry when I decided my older brother's wedding was more important than going to an LGBT plus event on our college campus with him. Honestly, Sis has given me a lot to think about. Sam is an important friend to me, and I obviously want the best for him and am hoping this is all just stress from the current global situation boiling over or something. But Sis is right in that Sam has spent years expecting to be my number one priority and using me as an emotional crutch. I'm going to give things a few days and see how they turn out. Any thoughts would be greatly appreciated. In the comments... Personally, I think your sister is right. That really does not sound healthy, and it sounds like Sam has a lot of the things that he needs to work through and learn. I've had friends who have been in similar places where it was necessary for us to cut ties, and when I've done so, I've always made it clear that if things change, I'm happy to try again. I don't think Sam is going to change for a while though, so wish him the best and tell him good luck. Sam sounds entitled, and when his family drops him on his ass, it'll be one hell of a rude awakening. I feel for his struggles though, I could never personally understand it, but he doesn't sound like a good friend. Friendships are a 50-50 effort. It's exhausting to be the person who drops everything to support and cherish someone who doesn't give you that same energy back when it counts. Don't contact him again, and don't apologize. Don't let the rose-colored glasses slip back on your face. Sam owes you an apology, and he needs to figure crap out on his own since he clearly isn't wanting any help. And now two years later, here's a follow-up post. Am I the asshole for telling a former friend that he was particularly responsible for his own bad life situation and I didn't feel bad for him? So a few years ago, I, 25 female, posted a story about my former friend, Sam. Sam had the misfortune to be born into an incredibly bigoted but rich family, and Sam stood to inherit a lot of money from his grandfather. Understandably, both of these things factored into Sam's decision not to come out to his family, at least not until his grandpa died and he got his inheritance. That was until two years ago when he called me very early in the morning to say that he'd been thinking about coming out to his parents and asked what I thought. I told him that it was a bad idea due to a combination of him definitely getting written out of the will, getting kicked out of his parents' house and cut off altogether, money, healthcare, etc., not having any savings, and not having another place to stay. Well, Sam didn't like that. 
He accused me of being transphobic and a bad friend, amongst other things. A few more blow-ups later, which, along with my little sister, helped me realize that my friendship with Sam was unhealthily one-sided. It led to me making the difficult decision to cut Sam out of my life. I sent him one final email saying that I was sorry about the fight, that I wished him well in whatever he chose to do, but that I also felt that neither of us was getting much good out of our relationship. Then I blocked him, and I forced myself to push Sam out of my mind. It was hard. I worried about Sam a lot, but was able to move out of my life. I spent these last two years working on myself, and it paid off. I climbed the ladder closer to my dream job, am in the best shape of my life, and most importantly, met my wonderful fiancé. Eventually, I managed to mostly forget about Sam. That brings us to yesterday. I was running errands when I stopped for coffee. When I was waiting for my drink, I heard someone call my name. It was Sam, and he looked rough. To the point that I didn't even recognize him at first. Anyway, Sam decided to join me. I awkwardly asked him how he'd been, and Sam launched into this long rant about how hard his life became after he came out to his parents. He got kicked out and cut off by his family, and since he didn't have enough savings to rent anywhere, Sam ended up having to couch surf for the past two years, losing a lot of friends when they got tired of him. Sam apparently got so depressed about everything that he stopped going to work and was finally fired about six months ago. When he finally was done, I honestly told Sam that I was sorry for everything he went through. He asked me if that was it, and another blow-up happened. Sam accused me of abandoning him when he needed my help. I said I did offer him help back then, but it just wasn't help that Sam liked. Then I told Sam that everything that happened to him was something that I warned him about, and that I didn't feel much sympathy for him because of that. He knew the risks, still came out, so he couldn't gripe about the consequences. I left after that, and everyone who knows what happened is split on my response. So, am I the asshole? OP offers the following explanation for why they think they might be the asshole. I think I could be the asshole because I might have sounded like I think Sam deserved what happened to him or that I agree with his family's actions. In the comments, not the asshole. You didn't cause any of that to happen to Sam. He asked for your opinion and you provided it. He blew up. Then he seems to have cornered you looking for an apology from you and once again blew up when you didn't again provide his desired response. Exactly. I wonder how much of Sam's claim of being abandoned had to do with the fact that it was one less couch that he could surf. Not the asshole. Just because someone treats you badly doesn't give you the right to treat others the same way. If he wants to blame someone for his bad luck, then he should be blaming his family. You told him what you could see going wrong, he didn't like it, and now he's mad at you because you were right. Sounds like you did the right thing cutting him off. You didn't approach him, he approached you and started the problems. Not just that he was blaming OP, but then when she expresses sympathy for all that has happened, he blows up at her for not being there after he first blew up at her. Nobody needs a person in their life who, when asked for advice, gets mad at the advice with rage and insults. OP did the right thing by cutting Sam out of her life if this is how he responds to anyone doing or saying anything other than exactly what he wants. Not the asshole. Sam also sounds like a big user. How does one couch surf for two years with a well-paying job and make no attempt to save for a deposit? Big user. OP, I know that was hard, but good for you. You did the right thing and Sam has no one to blame except himself. Whatever shreds of sympathy I had for Sam evaporated when he called OP's little brother a brat and told her not to care for him. OP's in a better place without toxic people like Sam in her life. Sam wants OP to care for him like a child instead. What a vampire. Well, even vampires are less demanding. They at least prefer it if their prey invites them in on their own accord before sucking them dry. If you're lucky, you get to be the consort to a hot vampire and cool powers, or a ghoul which have their own superpowers and they get to get high. What is Sam offering? 
And that's where I'm going to end today's episode, guys. I do hope you enjoyed. If you did, let me know what you thought about it, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.